Hey there, fans of brotherly love wrestling. It is I, Vic Delicious. Philly's own, the Mecca here. It is the real McCoy, J D X Justin D Xavier. And it's your man, CD, the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old friend, RJ City. Hey there, brotherly love wrestling. Bill Carr here. Hey everyone, this is two-time guest Wheeler Yuta. Two bozos from Philadelphia flapping their gums about pro wrestling this, pro wrestling that. Which is not that unique in the grand scheme of things yet. You are in for a treat because you're tuned in to Brotherly Love Wrestling. Philadelphia, are you ready? This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome, everybody, to Brotherly Love Wrestling, the return of the Essential Series. And this is going to be the Essential 2023 Year in Wrestling. So, Happy New Year. We haven't talked to you since before Christmas. When, If you want to call that a show, we had a show with the goons and Ernie, who took so much abuse a... in that show. I don't know if we had a uh, show. I don't know if the, I don't know if we consider it us having a show on that one. No, that was definitely a goon show for sure. Which is, I mean, I guess I kind of expected that. Maybe not to that level, but a little bit. So, All right. I'm gonna be. If you want me to start, I'm gonna be overly cheesy. Okay. For those who don't know, we're just gonna go. He had not, it's our it's a little bit more than our usual just five. We're gonna go five and five because it's a full year in review. So we're gonna do the top ten moments. Joe gets five, this I get five. Just, this one's just for us. Yeah. This one's for us. This one's for us and our fans. No, yeah. I mean my first pick. Okay. Our five fans and us. <laughs> okay. So I'm putting on for my wrestling moments of the year, having our episode. 30 300th episode with the now i put uh-huh. that because i mean our history with them I like getting it. six years plus six mm-hmm. years plus now yes no 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 six years total no how, how the fuck have we been doing this dude 2017 we... So, yeah, our first show came out in December of 2017. It is now January of 24. So, you're right, six plus. Yeah. Yeah. Six plus years. Yeah. Doing this fucking show. Hmm. I mean, look, it's in wrestling. It might not be mainstream wrestling, but look. I'm always relevant. If nothing else, I'm always relevant. (laughs) I'm in the now. Always. (laughs) Always. No, I just think I feel personally, I mean, just getting to talk to Vic and Hale, albeit Hale is forty eight minutes late. But I mean, it's just, it's just cool. Like it's like something that I wouldn't have thought for this show. One to maybe go this long, mm-hmm. like because we didn't know we were just fucking, we were just bullshit. We're doing what we we're doing what we still have been doing from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just, I put that as a top moment. I mean, and whenever 500 happens next year. 500, or, Jesus Christ. No, no, 500 won't be next year. Uh-uh. It'll be the following year. No, it won't even be the following year. Shit, we might have four more years for fucking 52 weeks a year. Or 52 weeks, yeah, a year. Jesus I don't know if we can get to 500. That'd be that'd be something if we got to 500. If we get to 500, I think we gotta end it. I, yeah, think, I, agree. I think that's I think that's the cap. I agree. I think I think we might have just had an epiphany. Yeah, 500 is a fuck load. If we make it to 500, where I think we tap, unless yeah. something's still booming, and we, because we'll be, I'll be in my 40s. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. 
<laughs> and Lord knows what what the future holds for us in the next couple of years. We, I mean, who knows what what we're going to be doing? So yeah, five hundred's a lot, man. But I mean, look, we, if we would have if we would have said at the very beginning we're going to get to three hundred episodes, there's no I remember way. Hundred, yeah, a hundred. I was amazed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're right. I agree. I like that pick. And I wouldn't, I didn't even think about picking something like that. I was thinking more of all the mainstream stuff, but I hey, agree. You know we are mainstream. Don't let anyone tell you differently. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. And not only that, talking to the now it is, is talking to friends. It's talking. Yeah. We, we, we will talk about wrestling, but our best conversations with the now are not about wrestling. It's, it's just shooting the shit. And every single time, whether it's on the show or at an event or even in a text thread, just talking shit, it's it's like talking to friends because they are friends at this point. So, yeah, I I love that pick. I didn't even think about it. I'm kind of mad I didn't, but <laughs> good pick. <laughs> <laughs> it's all downhill from here. That Basically. was a good song. Yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right. I'll make my first yeah, pick. Beat, beat that! that. <laughs> I don't know if I can beat that. Mentalism. <laughs> I can't. I can't beat that. So I'll go with what maybe is the number one thing in professional uh, professional wrestling. Forget twenty twenty three, but we saw a lot of it, and the meat and potatoes, and maybe the best part, and the ending almost is the bloodline. This bloodline storyline really got to its height. In January, February, March, and then, of course, you know what I mean, April, where we have WrestleMania 39. But, man, it was must-see TV every single week, and I'm going to pull it all together. I'm not going to use different segments off of Raw or different segments off of SmackDown. It's not worth it. Or just pick Mania, Cody, and Roman. The Bloodline, like, obviously over three years, but that three, four months beginning 2023 was absolutely fire and nobody you kicked it off you kicked it off with cody winning the fucking royal rumble yeah you yeah i mean each and you had sammy sammy at elimination chamber in his hometown and getting so close like everything about that and like we said on this show i think it it really really took a big 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 hit when jay lost to Roman with Jimmy screwing him over. And I think the bloodline kind of took a nosedive. They're still, they did still do good things, but man, those last four months of the year, it was, and before, but just because of 2023, it was untouchable. There was nothing in wrestling better at all. And not even, and it wasn't even a competition. So I think the bloodline overall still will hold the number one spot for me in 2023 in wrestling. Dude, you wiped out so much, like a large chunk of some of the best of 2023. Yeah. Like you can, all you had to say was Sami Zayn. Mm -hmm. Like that's all you could have done. You could have left bits and pieces of the bloodline for me. Sorry. So very fucking selfish of you. You took the whole fucking thing. <laughs> you, you told me to, much? you told me to beat the sentimental pick. That's the only thing I could come close with. I could beat it. I mean, you just fucked the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you really, you really set the bar really fucking high. You gave me with... a challenge, and I tried to meet it. Yeah, but you, you, you were selfish. You were very <laughs> selfish. Now I have to think of like anything that could have possibly fucking happened. Like, it was, did anyone like return in fucking twenty twenty three? Like, anyone like would go on a hiatus and return? To like a certain company in 2023 like does that fuck it did that even happen like i'm trying to think did anyone come back that's crazy it's cr like i can't even think <laughs> oh see a punk in wwe like it happened at the end it was recent but i mean as soon as as soon as I well, we, we we went over it on the show numerous times. We did a show before we even knew this was going to happen about what we wanted to happen, and we thought it, like we we playing this whole fucking thing out. We've mm -hmm. had multiple shows on this. Yes, but I still had that feeling 
Like, this wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Like, I just, like, kind of, like, I brushed it under the rug. I was like, fuck it. <laughs> Didn't even think. It did, it, like, and I've pretty much, I've gotten a little bit into it now more because I actually, I'm not locked out anymore. Yeah. But, like, I'm still not really on social media enough to where, like, I'm catching spoilers or, like, I'm living, like, I'm living like a fucking kid again. Mm-hmm. I'm just watching. I'm I'm not paying attention to any outside noise. I'm just watching. I'm taking a lot of this from my father. I'm just watching. I mean, look, I think that's beneficial, especially for you. I think it's beneficial. Uh, I think your fandom is fed better when you're not reading all those things. I don't don't need any outside noise. Yeah, I I think it's just the way you are. You're, You're much better as a fan and you're happier as a fan if you're not reading all that shit and seeing that and putting that other shit in your head because then you start building shit up and you know what I mean expecting one thing and it just it ruins it dude i just get to shut it down i just shut it down and i fucking just watch and it's become i don't watch as much and that's one of my goals for 2024 is to actually fucking get reacclimated with at least a third of wrestling. Like I'm going to try I'm going to get all WWE and NXT. That's my main goal. But I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit more indies this year. I'm going to fucking utilize IWTV. I'm going to fucking just watch it just to fucking have fun. Yeah. I'm tired of fucking social media. I'm tired of hearing bullshit everything. And, and fucking I'm going to tangent this if fucking anybody knew this was coming. I'm also going to preface it with a burp. <laughs> Class act I am. Like even when the shit about Jericho came out, I was like, it's like I was like, like I was like, I don't want to read it anymore. Like I don't want to have an opinion. I don't like. I don't. I'm not a fucking. I'm not an outlet. I'm not a fucking major. Like I'm not a big Twitter person where I'm going to be like fucking a lot of fucking like likes if I say anything. I'm not an influencer. Just fucking. I don't. I don't want to hear. I just. That's the other reason I don't want to fucking see social media. I don't want to see it. I don't want to see anything. Mm-hmm. It fucking it ruins it ruins wrestling for me personally. Now other people love it. I don't yeah. care. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly I don't care if you love it. Great. I don't. I don't like. I mean, I'll go on. I'll search a couple key fucking words. I'll catch some fucking clips, like something that might have happened a couple days ago. I'll catch clips and shit, but anyway, I'll bring it back, social media, bring it back. CM Punk coming back to WWE was just like, I felt like when I saw it, yes, I was shocked and all, and then when it actually set in and the next day happened, I was like, fuck, man, they're like, it, like they were firing. And I said this before, they were firing all cylinders. Did they need Punk? No, but they got him, and now it feels like they can't be fucking stopped. Yeah. Yeah. It feels yeah. Like the, it's just, it's like at the tippiest top tier with everybody that they have like the perfect like i was jokingly talking to mike the other day mm-hmm. and we were like oh yeah what's the big surprise gonna be thursday i was like i said it. i was like maybe it'll bring back sunday night heat just as a joke but <laughs> you know what they got fucking they got so much roster that they could do it they could legitimately bring back an hour of sunday night heat they could i wouldn't I don't think i'd be upset about that you know what? I would start my journey back into fucking watching full time <laughs> on Sunday night heat. <laughs> just for fucking fun nostalgia. Just to see that fucking symbol. I would love it. Now you can keep velocity. I don't need velocity. <laughs> I just don't. Give me I'll take Sunday night heat though. Alright, well, I'm gonna slip over to AEW for my next pick. Because to uh, me, yeah, stop. come on, uh, I didn't say Tony <laughs> Khan. I didn't say Tony <laughs> Khan. All right, don't boo AEW. Boo, boo. <laughs> um, because I believe this was probably the greatest match of the year in that company. Uh, MJF, Brian Danielson in a sixty-minute Iron Man match at Revolution. It was absolutely phenomenal 
phenomenal. For, I mean, MJF proved that he was more than just the guy, the champion that was on the mic. Not that I thought that anyway, but I know there were detractors that said MJF needs to prove that he's a wrestler. But, man, did he prove it, and he beat Danielson. Danielson put him over. It, it just – it God, I, I've watched the match probably two or three times already, and it's just – it's so good, and that's why I still hold on hope for AEW for matches like that and some of the stories that they can tell um, because just when they actually do get it right, they can get it really, really right. But it's just so few and far between, and I think it's lost people. And I sent you the TikTok about uh, Eric Bischoff saying how they lost people, and they had good intentions, but like, a lot of people are already too far gone. Hence, you booing me when I said AEW. Like it's right, just so that that's was, what it is. That, that was all in good fun, but I will say this: after what you just said, I will, I'll, I will say this. And this isn't like a, I'm not gonna like hate on AEW because of this, but it just kind of is what it is. We said two moments. Well, we actually said three moments. So far, you were. Mm-hmm. This was the fourth. All three of the moments weren't matches. Given right. the first one was us, yeah. but the two other ones, they weren't really matches. They were more moments. Yeah, That's what WWE... Now, WWE could put on a good match, and there yeah. probably are matches that would be top of the most memorable list as well, but that's the difference. AEW, you're there for the big-time matches. The problem with AEW is, is that you're not... Like, there's only so many big-time matches that you can get away with. Like, there's only so many times you can run them, too. Like, how many times did they run Mox Omega or Mox Jericho? Like, he got old. Same thing with Daniel Bryanson. Brian Danielson. Daniel Bryanson. <laughs> Brian Danielson. I, I actually like the first one. If he were to actually go somewhere else, I hope he uses that name. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what it is that's what AEW is the AEW you're really going to look at the matches and I don't think I don't think the matches always equate to best moments like they can be a phenomenal match and I'm going to give you the Daniel Bryan or Bryan Danielson and MJF because that was that was more than a match mm-hmm it was uh, There was a good build to that. The match just happened to be a payoff, and what happened during the match for AEW, kind of that was what cemented MJF yeah. as legitimate. Mm-hmm. That yeah. win right there, that legitimized MJF. So that's a moment, and he's the biggest guy that they got there. He was the best on the mic. He didn't have to be the best in the ring because of how he could talk you into a match, and that's what I want to see. And that's what I want to hear. Someone that can make me, that's what Swerve has. Swerve can get me involved before the match even happens. So I don't really care so much about the match. I care about the result. But I I, I don't care too much about the match because the person has talked me into it. AEW doesn't have enough of that. I agree, yeah. But that that isn't old news. I've I've said it probably in lesser ways. Mm-hmm. I think this is the the best I've ever elaborated on it. Yeah. Perfect. I'll hit the that's for Bill. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh I think that being I like I I like the AEW side of it, I don't know what moments we can talk about most memorable or best. Like you can talk about CM Punk and how he got fucking kicked out of AEW, basically. I think that was strategic on his end. But I mean, is that one of the best moments? No, but it's one of the most memorable for yeah. AEW. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, yeah. I mean, if I were to go, if I were to pick an AEW actual moment. Like, one that was significant, I mean, especially for them, you're talking about signing and someone showing up, like, and then their initial 
reaction and their initial and their initial clash is when and I'm gonna hate that I'm about to say this. Adam Copeland, <laughs> aka Edge, Edge. Well, I'm gonna call him Edge. I did that once. I'm not gonna do it again. Edge shows up in AEW. Like, no, it wasn't as big as when he showed up at the Rumble. It just wasn't. No, it wasn't. You're right. It just wasn't. But him jumping right in with Christian and the history and everything, I'd say that's on the substantial side for AEW when it comes to moments and actually having an impact and being like, because Edge, Edge is going to draw. He's going to get them views. He's going to get the eyes on him. It's Edge. No, and just leading to that match on Saturday that was um, last Saturday, which was fucking phenomenal. It was absolutely, it for a match that was, and like I said, I, I, when they do it right, they really, really can do it right. And there's not a lot of hardcore street fight matches that have the storytelling in it. But with those two guys... It, they absolutely killed it. There were there were nods left and right to their history. Edge coming out in his WrestleMania 22 vest that he wore against Mick Foley, which already should have tipped people off about the burning table. <laughs> like, I mean, there was just everything about that match culminating and still obviously a lot to be answered after the after the result of that match, but like you said, that return immediately right into Christian and all the way up till last Saturday. Like it, it just, yeah, I, I think that would be a really, really good one other than Daniel Bryan and MJF. Like, yeah, I think it all should be lumped together with the ending being that match. Yeah. I mean, if I like, and I, I wasn't planning on throwing out an AEW one, but I did it. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not all bad. <laughs> I mean, I took a safe route. Don't get me wrong. A yeah. really safe route. But, I mean, when it comes to memorable, I mean, given I fell off. I fell off yeah. a lot. Like, I was only catching bits and pieces. But, I mean, if Sting's last match had happened in 2023, that would have easily been on the list for me. I don't know, and I don't know if I care about who it was. I did. That would have obviously been a moment. But I may not have to wait for 2024 for that one. Yeah. All right. So your next moment. So we each, I got three. Yeah. You're on your third. <laughs> so uh, my third one is going to be a moment that uh, A, was unexpected. B, obviously no one in the entire wrestling world wanted. And that is the loss of Bray Wyatt. I think as a gut punch to every wrestling fan over the yeah, past definitely, definitely 15 not, years. Definitely not a positive. Yeah, not a no. Positive moment. Just, definitely a memorable. As far as 2023 goes, because of how his return looked and look, did it his our his return was in our city, in our in our center, and one of the greatest returns, period. That I mean, that pop, the three-level fucking pop that he got when he came back at Extreme Rules, it's going to be hard for anyone to even touch that. But then to a guy who's our age, to pass away that suddenly, leave two kids, or three kids, uh, and the whole that, is especially the mind, and the wrestling mind and the genius that was Bray Wyatt as far as the psychology and the storytelling and the visuals that he would bring, I think. Um, but when you look back at 2023, you're every, I mean, at the anniversary of it, you're going, always are going to think about it because it's just, it's such a gaping hole for WWE. And look, you say about them firing on all cylinders and everything, how stacked they are. Imagine if they still had Bray Wyatt. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's this is they're stacked without a Bray Wyatt. That's a big, big statement. So it, it just, yeah, it's not a fun, great, memorable moment, but it is a moment of 2023 that all wrestling fans, AEW, WWE, doesn't matter. You felt the loss 
because of just the the person and then of course the talent that we got to enjoy albeit a short period of time yeah definitely definitely memorable 100 percent, 110 percent memorable and it, it was just it was i didn't believe it when i fucking saw it i thought i was i don't know what the fuck i was reading but that was insane that was that was like really that one hit close because of everything you said like that one was like you looked up his age and he's like 36 and you're like fuck yeah that's fucking crazy mm-hmm. but sorry right. to bring so, us down <laughs> now, not, now this is our intermission yeah. we have intermission. <laughs> everyone go piss and fucking get some food in them and get happy jesus <laughs> sorry all right I'm going to hit the lighter side, and I'm just going to take a person. I don't know if it's a moment. Or maybe we call it a movement. Okay. Whatever it might be. But it's just one word, and it got over. Just one word. One guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, like, fucking, it, it was one of those things where, like, you could see it happening. Like, you could see, like, it's right on the preface of fucking, or preface it, of fucking getting humongous. And it just blew the fuck up. Like, L.A. Knight came in like a fucking banshee and just took over the wrestling world for a good amount of 2023. Mm -hmm. Like, he was the top. Like, when everyone wanted it to be Cody... Like, L.A. Knight was the fucking tippity top. It got him all the way to fucking Saudi for a fucking world title shot. Yeah. Like, that momentum was scary. Scary good. Mm -hmm. He was enjoyable. And he's another guy that I'm fucking, he does, he's a safe guy. He just wrestles a very safe, conservative style, nothing too fucking flashy. But he doesn't need to. Because he's going to talk you into the fucking arena. He's going to talk you into wanting to see him do whatever. Him and The Miz. That was like fucking gold right there. It was very good. It was a good test. Yeah. And it was it was executed perfectly. Like, I don't want him to go anywhere. I don't want LA Knight to fizzle. Like, I want him to keep... I want him to be top tier. Because he can be. And he should be. He did... He, he carried... A lot of 2023, minus maybe a few others. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if he'll make the list, but he should. <laughs> uh, um, Did you know who was that a good impression? I mean, it, it, you, you have way better, put it that way. You have way better. Um, I'm All right. the game. <laughs> and I'm on this podcast. Uh, and I'm talking wrestling. Uh. All right, I'm going to go. I've been debating back and forth, but I definitely want to put this in because I feel like the moment. You have to hit. I know. But I have, some both I, have, I have three that I'm bouncing around that I'm not sure which I want in. Um, Bad Bunny. At Backlash in Puerto Rico, Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna put all of Backlash because it was from start to finish a phenomenal event, and I, I think even after that we said probably the best Backlash pay per view we've ever seen. If and I think by a long a long shot that I can remember, yeah, but just him and that match, just that fucking crowd, that and, fucking yeah, crowd, the crowd. Hey. The drone Dude. following him in in that entrance and that entire crowd singing his that song the whole time lost its fucking mind, like yeah. its absolute fucking mind. Like that was I don't know what the fuck you would classify that. That's not pop. That mm -hmm. was like I don't know what that was. It was a concert. It was fucking. It was a lot of different shit, but it was fucking insane. That crowd. Yeah, and and I want to go back there. I want them to go back there once a year. Fucking go back there once a year because that crowd was extremely fucking loud. Yeah, like the whole time, their fun. energy level fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, uh, fun the whole time. It was just everything about it, sitting at home and not being there. You you had fun you watching them have fun. Like it just it, you wanted to be there if you weren't there because of how much fun they were having and the event was so fun. You had throwbacks like Carlito coming back and you there was just so much good about it and you had the Zelina Vega moment. Uh it just everything about that pay-per-view and Bad Bunny obviously headlining it in that moment. But yeah, Backlash in Puerto Rico was, uh, as a moment, was in 2023, was amazing. Ooh, that was wild, that fucking pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. Not a premium live event, it's a pay-per-view. <laughs> I mean, I only got one left, right? Yeah. Oh, shit. I gotta make this one a good one. You've had some. You had some pretty good. Not like you haven't had good ones. Like you've had solid picks. I don't. I mean, I can't save the best for last because I, 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 I could have because you want to. I don't think you got there. I wouldn't have. Absolutely, a hundred percent. I would never even have thought about it. You definitely could have saved that for the end. I definitely could have. I could have pocketed that one. Yeah. If I'm going to go memorable events. Or a memorable moment. Something that just stands out. The thing is, I I don't know what to choose. Like I don't I feel like 2023 was a was a really good year in wrestling. It's just that I don't know how many memorable, memorable events that I could actually pull from. That's the problem. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, like I could pull events, but I don't know if they're really that memorable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think um, there's a like there's a couple. I mean, I can uh, I have two that if you want to, but I could I could easily defer. I could defer my last pick, and you could use your last two. But are your last two going to be that memorable? Yes, and that's honestly, like I said, I had in my head I had three, including Bad Bunny. And like the last two are the ones that I'm fighting over because personally, and obviously this is our show, we can do whatever the fuck we want. We can put whatever we want on here. But like yeah, I'm trying I to think mine were justified to to appease the masses. <laughs> I'm trying to live up to the level of like it at moments of 2023. Um because I'm back I'm back and forth. Like I want to include NXT, oh. you know what I mean? But oh, go ahead. Here we go. Go ahead. Because I think I'm pretty sure. Was this 2023? Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. I'm gonna say it might have been no, it had to have been 2023. What was the main event of night one on WrestleMania? At 39? Yeah. Man. Was that KO Austin? In the street fight? And then the starter event? No, 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 no. That, that was, was 38. That was 38. Yeah, because right. that was That's the same year. Sure. Yeah, no, that was the same year where Sammy was with Knoxville. Oh shit! That shit, that was fun. That was a fun night. <laughs> All right, so I still, I still will. De- I will donate my pick then. See, I'm that fucking far out. <laughs> um. Yeah, and that's my I fault. I, I even apologize. Have Austin. I apologize for taking up WrestleMania 39 and Elimination Chamber all in that first uh, first pick. Yeah, man. You fight like I said. The bloodline was. My that was my go to for twenty three. Yeah, like that was that was the best. Like I would, I honestly, I would put the bloodline as fucking three. Three picks would be the bloodline for me. So all right, two would... if you're going to defer, I'll do something that maybe you're not thinking of that I feel like you would involve if you remember. I mean, I know you remembered it, but. One of the most socially viewed moments in in WWE in history 
on their social media account happened in 2023. And that is the unexpected return of The Rock to SmackDown when they were in Colorado. And that's when he got in the ring with Austin Theory. And Pat McAfee was there as well. That moment, I forget how many millions upon millions of views there was, but it was a ridiculous number. So for that, because obviously it's going to be memorable, it's one of the most viewed videos in the history of social media for WWE, The Rock returning in Colorado on SmackDown. I think is a big, big moment for WWE in 2023. He just returns Monday. Yes. And, and lays an Easter egg about sitting at the head of the table. So before I do, before I do that last, my last pick, I see a lot of people are already saying like, Oh, Open it's arms. yeah. Roman. Oh, Cody lost his spot. And now, now Cody knows how CM Punk fell. And, I don't believe for a second it's going if, to be if mania. Anything, if anything, CM Punk just felt how CM Punk felt. That's exactly what happened. To him. It's happening again. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. I, I think it's it's for a uh, chamber. I really think they they well, locked him down. Australia? Yeah, Perth, Australia. They're flying the rock out to Australia to do it. I mean, the rock. Probably has his own six, private fucking plane. They don't have to fly him six, anywhere. At six in the morning, they're going to do rock fucking Roman. Yeah. No. Uh, are you going to watch? I don't know, man. At Mania, yes. I'll fucking be there. Well, yeah, no shit. I know that. I'm saying if you know it's rock Roman, and it's not good, and that match will not be at 6 a.m., that match will be around 9, 9 30. Yeah, but it's still 9.30 a.m. Yeah. Like, it's not going to get the views because people aren't going to be home. It's you don't not need prime to. time. You don't, you don't need to it's live. Not. It's Peacock. It, you stream it. It isn't going to matter. And, yes, no, I think there are going to be plenty of people that get up and watch this event. How many fucking people watch Wrestle Kingdom at 3 in the morning, Scott? Not <laughs> that that you no, know, there is a a good fan base in the United States that is New Japan fans that get up at three in the fucking morning and watch two night event of Wrestle Kingdom. So WWE, you you can't tell me that there's more WWE fans in the United States than there are New Japan fans. There are plenty of people that are going to be up at six a.m. watching this event, and you're adding The Rock to it. Hell yeah! Look. I'm already down well, to do it. You also got the people that are in Europe and whatnot that are actually five or what is it, five hours or more? Yeah. Ahead. So it'll actually be 11 a.m. there. Yeah. yeah. As you get closer to fucking Australia. Yeah. Time gets a little closer. I mean, I just don't see them doing rock anywhere but Mania. I don't think the I, only problem, I don't think the only, it, there's a there's a there's a few tiers to if it is Rock Roman for Mania. Now you've just showed your hand for the Rumble. Well, yeah, because you've you've taken away one of the combatants of who someone can pick. So say this. Well, while we're doing this, you have Rock. Let's feed into the hysteria that is Rock Roman at Mania. Say we're getting Rock Roman Mania Night 2, which I'm down for. Don't get me wrong. You're then going to have to swerve. That almost guarantees Punk Rollins, which we think that's going to happen anyway. So that would be your Night 1 main event. But then that means you're getting Cody and Orton. Right? Maybe that would be the only thing that would be left, really, for Cody to actually have a meaningful match. Yeah. I, I can't taking, see anywhere you're else. Taking, you're taking Cody out of the main event and probably putting him at the start of one of the nights. Yeah. I don't know. I don't see it happening. Because, I really don't. Well, here's the thing, here's the thing though. If Roman wins the main event, 
of night two, which I think would happen, God, that place is going to go absolutely nuclear. And that so, might not be a bad thing, but they're going to boo the living hell out of Roman Reigns. Which is they the goal. Ready. Which is the goal. Oh, yeah. I didn't say it was a bad yeah. thing. This is yeah. what they want. Like, yeah. the, you want nuclear heat? You want people to fucking really fucking clamp down on hating Roman Reigns? That's that's one way. But here's here's the reason why, A, I don't, I think that they're set in this Cody Roman ending at Mania. Uh, I think it's already set. I think it's been written down for three to four months, if not more, that this is the main event regardless. And they're throwing all these things in front of us to try and uh, take the predictability away. And it's working. It's definitely working because everyone's fucking downing it. All the memes that people are making and the people that are upset and memes that are saying in 2024, Cody standing in a AEW ring saying I'm home, making fun of that. Like all it's working because people are fucking buying it, but I don't see it. I see rock Roman because going into mania, if the rock and Roman fight at elimination chamber and Roman reigns beats the rock, the real head of the table, if he really does beat The Rock, which he will, The Rock is not winning that title, that means that he is the ultimate guy. There is no bigger Samoan than Roman Reigns. He just beat the head of the table. How much that elevates Roman Reigns even more than how possibly he could be to then lose to Cody Rhodes? What a big win after he just beat The Rock. The Hall of the should be Hall of Fame or soon to be Hall of Fame rock and Cody is the one to dethrone him that makes it that win that much bigger for Cody Rhodes which is why he is going to main event night two and he's going to win that title at night two for his dad and complete the hard times it's it, it's it's gonna happen I'm not scared at all because I don't see Roman fighting anyone else on night two but Cody Rhodes no, I think I think you're not wrong. I think everything you said is valid. I don't listen anyway to what other people say, nor do I really care. But I don't see them doing it at 6 a.m. I mean, you could be right, and you probably are. But it just doesn't seem like a WWE thing to do. To put the rock Roman, but unless it's just a one time, obviously it's a one time thing. And if Australia's paying the big bucks for the rock, then they're going to fucking shell out the rock for them. And who better to go into the fucking match than Roman Reigns? Because you're not going to have the rock versus anyone else. Makes sense. I don't see why they don't do it at Rumble. Though. Why would you do this at Rumble? Because you already got Orton Reigns. He needs to get his uh, payback. Yeah. Yeah, that's just another stepping stone for Roman. Mm -hmm. You beat the Legend Killer, you beat The Rock, and you're set up to look unbeatable. Because how is Cody Rhodes going to be the guy that's held the title that long, who's beaten everybody, including the one of the greatest superstars of all time, a Mount Rushmore Hall of Fame wrestler like The Rock? It's all right he's there. Beaten, he's already beaten Lesnar yeah. several times. Yeah. It's, his his run might not be high in numbers. Like he might not have wrestled that much, but the opponents that he's beaten have been the top the top of the top tier of who's who of wrestlers. Yeah. And the sad part about this is I have my last pick and I completely took out my last pick because I have I got so focused on the Rock Cody that I can't remember what my last pick was now because I didn't <laughs> I didn't write All it right. down. Wait, I didn't you know write what? it down. <laughs> so we did a double tier Rock. We did the Rock for, for nine and we did the Rock for ten. We did the Rock coming back in Colorado, oh, okay. and then we oh, did okay. the Rock coming back Monday night. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, when the Rock shows up, <laughs> that's memorable. It's the fucking Rock. Yeah, yeah, it is. 
mean, he's 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 the fucking rock. When he comes back, it's it's it just takes over your brain. I feel like there's something I'm missing, and I know there's something I'm missing. He's definitely missing something, but is it bigger than the rock? Monday's Rock, would, which, don't get me wrong, it was big. And I loved how the WWE did it because I'm sitting on the couch watching and they're like, up next, the former WWE champion returns to Monday Night Raw. And in my head, I'm going, all right, who's it going to be? Like, who who are they really going to pull out? And that fucking Jinder Mahal music hits. And I'm like, there's no fucking way. Like, they, this is not it. Like, no, they can't. This this cannot be the former fucking champion they're talking about. It felt like the old times, didn't it? It did. It felt like a Vince fucking booking. Like, fuck you, Vince. Like, this, God. And, like, then, he started, and then he went, like, over, like, stereotypical. Yeah, 80s fucking, 80s America is horrible fucking promo. And once he started doing that, I'm going, all right, who's coming out? Like, I, someone's coming out. This isn't it. Like, obviously, it's going to be somebody. Did part of you think it was going to be Hogan? <laughs> no, I didn't think it was going to be Hogan. Um, the real marathon? But I did hear, or I know The Rock was in the state earlier in the day for for the... <laughs> <Huge>. <laughs> he well, was in the state of California. <laughs> well, first of all, he wasn't that far away. So where were they he Friday? Where were they Friday? Wow, you're asking the wrong guy. Because I want to say, I like, I, I want to say he was in San Diego, and I forget where they were. Like, it wasn't a far distance. It was a couple hour difference, I think, at most. And I heard it early in the afternoon, and I'm going, man, could it be The Rock? And then when that music hits, Jesus Christ. Like, I always, I always put Austin over Rock with that glass-shattering pop. But God, just I watched Samantha Irvin's reaction yep. that they put up there. Three times. Yeah, three I watched times. it multiple times as well. And like and she that, goes, she like comes to life. She's like, huh? <laughs> she gets electrocuted. Literally, the most electrifying man electrocuted her into a full stance. Yeah, She's that like, huh? is just like it's so visceral and it's so authentic. You know what I mean? And the smile that's on her face is just like, everyone's like that. I'm like, man, it does the rock get a bigger pop than Stone Cold? Like, I would love that. You know how when the Phillies were in the were going for the World Series and they have the decibels of how much Citizens Bank Park? Like, I would love to know, like, give me the loudest Austin pop and the loudest rock pop. I would love to see what's more because they're fucking ridiculous, ridiculous pops. Every single time, even when you yeah. know they're coming. I mean, it's bigger when you don't know, but even when you know they're coming, it's still a fucking insane, insane pop. Yeah. All right. I guess That's I'm going to have to keep rocking. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll have to keep yeah. rocking 10. Yeah. Don't be a jabroni. No. I guess not. It's the rock. Yeah. Yeah, I can't come with Maybe anything you better. Said, you already said the only other person that would steal a moment would yeah, be Austin. That's true. Like, if Austin came back, like, that's it. Like, there's not any two living. Undertaker, maybe? Well, Undert <laughs> well, yeah, here's a moment for you. Undertaker at NXT. <laughs> I mean... Showing up, at, showing up in fucking NXT, of all places. If that we really was hold on though, if we really could want, if really want to put, if Taker's going to be on this list for 2023, I'm probably going to end up putting him at num. I'll put him at number ten. If I'm not putting him from NXT, because we were in the crowd when it happened, when he came out at Raw 30, and he got in the ring, and he stood there with Bray Wyatt, and whispered in Bray Wyatt's ear, and you had Taker and Wyatt eye to eye again. And it was American Bandit. Like, that might be number 10. That, I think, might be yeah, something that, worth number 10. Yeah, I mean, being there in the crowd kind of helps. And phenomenal seats, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So this might have been one of the, our better seats that we've had. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But yeah, I'll, I'll put 
I'll put that over Rock. Rock already has knives. I'm going to put, put that. Just do Raw 30. Just do Raw 30 as a whole because that, that was a works. moment for us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. That, was, that mm -hmm. was just a moment itself to be there for the 30th anniversary and, like, just the amount of people that were fucking hyped up there. That was cool. I forgot that was this year. Yeah. Yeah, Raw 30 belongs on that list, the 30th anniversary of Monday Night Raw. Yeah. So let's do that. Yes. We'll put that at 10. The longest running episodic show of all time. Raw is war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, feel much, back to that. I feel much better. Much better for that yeah. at 10. Well, you, you put Rock as 9 and 9A. <laughs> Raw 30. See, I did help a little bit. Yeah. I mean, you, let, you, you steered the ship like usual. And I kind of just threw fucking... As soon as you said there. Taker is American Badass in my head, I'm like, oh, shit, that's right. We did have that this year. See? I, put, I played my role. And I played it well. I'll have one Say honorable mention. Okay. And it's going to be AEW. And it's going to be Adam Cole was the devil. Just to piss people off because people... I cannot believe how much people don't like this. Like, I've was, seen, it, was it because it's too predictable? Is it because everyone already knew? I mean, I think the people way that, were calling it anticlimactic. I think, yeah, I think they dropped the ball on how it happened. I just like I, I felt like it's, it's the only way it should have. It's only way it should have ended. There, who else should it have been? It shouldn't no, have been no, no. anybody else. No, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the way that they did it with this much of a build to just lackadaisically do it. I mean, I feel like they missed the step on that one. Okay. But I agree with you, right person. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to have, like, all this shit playing down, I get it. MJF is on the shelf for a while, so you kind of had to, like, do what you had to do. But I felt like they just could have, like, the production could have been better with it. Like, if you utilize the lights going out all the time. And for the wrong reasons, like... This is one of those times that you could have fucking utilized it a little bit better and fucking just done a little bit better job in it. The, the, just the visual of it could have been better. Like, if, if it's predictable, it is what it is. But if you actually make it, like, cool, like... The like, I, I texted you, and I was talking to Bill and Scott, and we were texting during the entire event because all three of us I were watching it. Amazing. Yeah, um, and I said this as the match was going on, because I was like, just in case I'm, I'm at least telling somebody cause I want to, I want to have proof that I was right, that I got it right. And like, I felt like the way I did it, I was more excited the way I did it than I was the way they did it. Because I, I basically had, I didn't have Joe winning, although I see why he won. I know MJF's beat up and he needs some time to heal. So I get it. That makes sense. But I would have had, like you said, the use of the, of the lights, I would have had him in the ring as the sympathetic baby face hurt, lost the title, lights go out. I never would have had Adam Cole down there, first of all. And I wouldn't have had Adam Cole dressed in all fucking black either. But I would have had the lights go out, the devil come on the screen, and you have the henchman come out and just up on the screen have the words, now is the time. Lights come back on and the henchmen are surrounding the ring. You know what I mean? Then anything would have been better than what they did. I think. yeah, like I think I just, it was one of those moments, like you, you thought about every integral part of this, and you missed the fucking the payoff. The I mean, look, the visual of him sitting in the chair and flipping his hair up and looking in Max's face. I get it. That was a pretty good moment, and him mouthing not you i under i i get all them guys but not you why you adam like that that was good they did a good job with that they, you see it you hear him say it even though he has, doesn't have a mic like it was all good but yeah it could have been better of course it could have been better but here's the, here's the thing though now that mjf's gonna be on the shelf it kind of gives them guys nothing to really do substantially I mean, the, Adam Cole's already now the biggest dick heel. Well, I mean, him and Christian, he's going to have a tough time ripping that that from Christian. But 
he's up there as a scum, as the scumbag heel now for what he did to MJF, making him his best friend, making him care for him, and then all of a sudden turning his back. And Adam Cole didn't even get a fucking title out of it. You got nothing out of it. Yeah, you got this crew of goons, but wasn't the ultimate goal to get that title? Joe has that title. You have a harder time getting it from Joe now than you did MJF. Like, yeah. I just, that's the only why thing. Just, why don't they just book him getting his ass kicked and fucking Cole just takes the title from him? Yeah, that's true. You definitely do that. But yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I, I've been calling it for a while, but uh, it, it's going forward. It's going to be interesting to see how this kind of rolls yeah, I out. I want to see how it plays out. I want to yeah. see how it plays out only because if you take the title off of Joe too soon, then it looks like it's just a transitional title. I don't think that does any good for Joe. So, but I also don't always agree with long title reigns. Maybe that sometimes you do need someone to hold a title for a couple of days and fucking drop it. Sometimes it you happen. do. Yeah, it doesn't happen that often anymore. You're getting all these long title reigns and they become boring. I think, yeah, I think that uh, Roman it may be the exception to that rule. Um, but, yeah, for the well, most part. It's, time to, it's could have been Roman's time a couple of times to lose the title. I see what the end game is if they do take that route. Mm -hmm. I see it. But there is a couple of people that could have beat Roman and they could have benefited substantially from it. But having someone predetermined in that spot, I get why they didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right, well, I think that will wrap up the our year in oh. review, the essential 2023 year in wrestling. Essential. That was essential. Yeah. Um, a couple things before we end the show. Congrats to our boys, The Now. They are double tag team champions. ISPW tag team champions, of course, but over the last weekend, right before the new year, uh, becoming outlaw wrestling tag team champions. So I was trying to think like now two belts or double. I'm trying to like get yeah, Becky two belts, but that doesn't make any sense. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to there's, there's, find there's, something. There's actually, there's actually four belts that would be involved. I know. That's why, I, that's why I was trying to find something. We got to find some kind of nickname. You're better at that than I am. You need to come up with something yeah. like that. I, mean, I could, but I don't think we need to. No, because double champions sound good enough. The champions are now. Yeah. So uh, congrats to those guys. And uh, can't wait to see what the future holds for them. Um, we might be having, uh, not might be having, I mean, it's almost official, but I won't, I want to announce it too early, but we might be having a on location show coming up within <laughs> the next couple months. We are in agreement with, bizarre. yeah, in what agreement on this location um someone reach out to us about it so we will be announcing that as it gets closer which is even weirder yeah uh, someone reached out to us yeah wants us to do a show at their establishment I'll, I'll put it at that and it'll be we'll probably be announcing it after the rumble that way once it's there That's we'll a cool establishment too if you think about it it's like perfect for us it is it, yeah it fits it, it fits um us as brotherly love wrestling and I so, think we got to wear suits for that one. I think suits? we got to go Conor McGregor. I think we're going to go like full Conor McGregor for this one. Need three piece suits to go to this place. I, th I think th that's how we make the presentation. Like it's like, uh, like this is like a step up. It's like very Cody Rhodes of us. It is. It's very, very Cody Rhodes of us. That's a good point, huh? You got me thinking yeah. now. But yeah. once we announce it, we and and you know where it is. Everyone can feel free to come out um, and you can sit, watch the show. Uh, we might even be doing it on the night of a pay-per-view to where this place will be playing a uh, a pay-per-view. We won't say which one yet. We did a live Q and A. How would that go? Jesus. I would like to do that. I wouldn't mind doing that. That'd be fun. This could be there. It could be fun. It could be atrocious. Yeah, we'll see. That's we good. we have That's a close. lot. We have a lot to put together. That's just why we're not gonna really say anything yet but this was a very good tease though i'll give you that thank you so uh look forward to that after royal rumble so early february we'll be making that announcement and uh that way we're locking it in and getting it done 
So uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching and listening. And uh, we'll be talking to you very soon. See ya.